everybody it is another video of some empty hey look we've still got some some snakes to play with from uh, 4th of July it is another empty shooting area even the lights are off and that is because we've got this great big old lot of cars most of those are special edition or well rubber tires maybe some old treasure hunts in there I don't even know what's in there They've all been sort of identified, mostly. You can see we've got a whole bunch more sitting over there. <laughs> Finally got out in front of this, and we are going to be shooting over here on the diorama. There it is. You can see we can get right on in there and do some cool stuff. So, if you aren't familiar, this is Teddy's Talladega's, where they throw the old cars the trade-ins off the cliff into the swamp and yep down there just because we could we got a little bear and he is right below the shack and you know what you should do is not feed the bear but we're not gonna look at those today too much we already did look at them I guess we're going to zoom in on this area and if you don't know how this works we'll get all zoomed in there sorry about the bouncing around that red background in the back right there is going to change into a background. Hopefully, we still don't have our new, our new uh, background. I'm going to point the flat light onto this. That will light that background up just a little bit more. Get rid of some of the shadows. And, well, we're just going to jump right in. We're going to take a look at 20 cars, kind of random from this set here is a very cool little hot wheels he is from the back for you folks that collect these you know what that guy is going to do he's got this little mechanism on him and that can go back down so he can be a regular truck i forgot what those were called they're not high rakers they were uh anyway text is probably showing up by now of what that guy is what do we got next This little panel cruiser, this is actually a little Chinese knockoff brand. Really liked this one. These show up in these lots quite a bit. This is somebody's um, 100th anniversary. Oh, Walgreens. That is a Walgreens car. I can only see it there when I zoom in. Uh, the red should have given away. The Walgreens cars were usually red that were exclusive to Walgreens. This one is a 70, what is it, 76, no, 70, a 70 Chevelle, that one from one of the Christmas series. Guessing that one is a Walmart exclusive. It does have the rubber tires and it's got those snowflakes on it. Most of these are identified. I, uh, I identify these when I get an extra, extra time and then I just kind of throw them back here in the garage so some of these could have been identified years ago well not in this box I guess we just bought this box a year ago this is one of the newer buys that we've gotten but uh, most of them have been identified not all of them here is a red baron that one from the holly not the hollywood the halloween series and pretty easy to tell it's from the halloween series probably a Walmart exclusive. I'll look that one up. Very nice. These uh, the, the Christmas cars, the Easter cars, and the Halloween cars used to be really, they would really stand out with the graphics. Nowadays they're really rather bland, but I don't bother with them much anymore. Uh, here is a Muscle Machines, one of my favorite other series next to Hot Wheels. Really liked these when they were out. Uh, they did not make a lot of castings with these. They got a lot of use out of the same castings, but they all, well, most of them had those big wheels in the back. If you're thinking of using those big wheels in your customs, they have a very, very thick axle. So most of the time you have to, uh, you have to rebuild the back suspension if you wanna, or front and back suspension if you wanna keep those intact. Also, the uh, cheaper line of those does not have interiors and, and or rubber tires. The more expensive series does. 
Here is a so fine. That one actually fits in there pretty well. That is from the What do we call this one? It wasn't Stars and Strikes. It was, uh, what's it say on there? It was, it was like the bowling, um, shirt logo design. What was the name of that? It's from 2002. S was it Spares and Strikes? I think it was Spares and Strikes. This was a really neat series. It had all this pinstriping on it. It was a really cool sub-series for... It was in the main lines from 2002, but a very cool sub-series. I'll get you the name on that. I think it was Spares and Strikes. This one, I believe, is a Classics 55 Chevy. Don't remember what series that's from. You can watch the videos we've done on the Classics. We've got uh, Series 1 and 2. I think we've already done the videos on. I believe we have all of Series 3, and we're working on Series 4. The Classics were a series of cars where they would come out with a ton of color variations on about 25 different cars. I believe this is another one. I don't have this one identified, but I believe that is also from the Classics. And they all had that kind of chromed paint or almost all of them did this one is did i say this was a 57 chevy i'm gonna start over that is a 57 chevy <laughs> here is a dc uh what did we call these a uh well, here's the Flash Rider. I'll put it out here to look at. That is the Plastic Man. That is from the DC series. Hot Wheels put out. What's that say on the side? What's that saying? Can we read that? The world's weirdest hero. Well, yeah. I'm not sure the uh, Plastic Man part of that car does anything for me, but I do like that car. That one has an opening hood, by the way. They usually do not open very well because the paint makes the hood a little bit thicker. So it usually scratches the paint. Here we go. This one is a Hot Wheels Auto Milestone. That is a nice one. That is a Walmart exclusive. And uh, if you're wondering what the Milestone series was about, first American made car with the front wheel drive and independent front wheel suspension. I think that's what all these cars were in the series. That uh, hood doesn't open now. I think that's what all these cars were in the series where they were some sort of first and these are always fun to do in the videos because I get to research what they were first. Not easy to find those milestone cars now. And I told the story of this particular lot in the last video, but uh, I bought this at the Hot Wheels convention last year in Los Angeles. These are all being sold for anywhere from two to five dollars each, and I just made him a a flat offer. Here's an F-150. This one will fit in this scene pretty well. That's a J.C. Whitney series. You can see it there on the side, only available at that store. There was a, uh, I want to say a couple series of these. Most of these have, um, not this particular one, I'm sure the uh, F-150s are still around, but most of the other cars in the series have bitten the dust in favor of customs. Not many of them floating around these days. Here is another favorite from the old timers. This one is one that always gets a lot of attention, but awfully hard to find in decent shape. Not that mine is really in decent shape. It probably looks better there on the, uh, on the video. This one, um, usually it has two small rear windows in this uh, particular model. That one is from the Hot Wheels, the Heroes, 1979. We'll take a look at the bottom of that. There you go. Spoiler Sport. You can 
can see the all that paint is normal for this casting to be all kind of messed up like that. This one was a popular one when it came out. I don't know, uh, as far as the really old cars, this particular one shows up a lot. Very hard to find in good shape. And you gotta pay, you gotta pay a little bit. Just a little bit to get it, to get it in good shape. Here we've got, this is a funny little car. This one is from Polar Lights. Oh, this is an interesting series. And this one is actually a little bit better suited for real 164 scale. Polar Lights models, uh, if I remember right, wasn't Polar Lights the ones that made the cigar cars, those kind of copper cars? I want to say they were. Polar Lights was not around for a long time. Kind of a cheaply made car, but they were always really nice looking. Here's the bottom if you're wondering what they look like. Polar Lights. Playing Mantis was the owner. Playing Mantis also owned Johnny Lightning. I don't remember if they owned them at the same time or if they lumped them together eventually. That is something I will have to research. Here is a Matchbox car from 1999 and... You know what? This looks like one I would have researched and I did not. This must be an Indy. I want to say that's an Indy 500 car. Is that right? No other identify. Oh, here we go. Well, official parade car. I don't think that's... I'll have to look that one up. It is a matchbox. But I don't know what that one is from. That's a 50... Bottom of these are really hard to read. Is that a 55 Chevy Bel Air? I think I'm going to go with a 55, a 55, a 55 Chevy Bel Air. Here is one that I'm actually surprised was still left in this lot. It's a, it's a Hot Wheels 99 Mustang with rubber tires. I'm going to put that so you can see it a little bit better. This one, one of the harder ones to find, I think, in this set. This is the Editor's Choice series. It was a Target exclusive from 2001, and it has some nice Eagle tires. This one is... Uh, I've seen this one many times before, unopened. I mean, obviously, I see them in the package all the time, but I don't usually buy them in the package. They cost too much and take up too much room to store. So when you're looking for them loose, a lot of times they're played with. And that one tends to get played with a lot. Here's another muscle car. That one, the heavy Chevy from 2003. This is a retool, actually, of this particular casting. I want to say it was retooled right around this time when this one came out. That's from the Hot Wheels Preferred series. Hot Wheels Preferred series was a really nifty series. If you are a collector of Hot Wheels and you like to collect the series, specific series. I don't meet too many of those people much anymore. I used to, used to find a lot more of them. But the Hot Wheels Preferred series is a real fun one to collect. Here is a muscle, no, I take that back. I was going to say this is a muscle machine, but it is not. This one is from the Cop Rod series. Well, it wouldn't be one of these videos without a Cop Rod, right? That one is from the Cop Rod series. That's 1999. And this one's interesting. This one has the plastic tires. In the last video, we saw the Cop Rods with the rubber tires. And those are, that was a really nice series. Later in its run, though, it did switch to the plastic tires and those star rims. This particular casting always has its uh, headlights broken off. They kind of hang out there, so if kids play with it, the headlights are always the first thing to go. The bumper's made of metal. It usually holds up pretty well, but those headlights go pretty quickly. Here's another one. Boy, we, we've gotten two of these in a row in the videos. This one from the uh, Jada lineup. And this one from its dub series. Some of these are really nice cars. Oh, I got 
got that one a little off center here. Let's give the dub series its due. That one is a uh, Mercury. 51 Mercury. If you ever wonder about the scale on these, they, they always call these 164 scale. But they really aren't all 164 scale. They're all different scales. They're all very different scales. There's very few of these makers that stuck to the scale exclusively. Here is a 97 Johnny Lightning, and I'll have to research this one. I do not have... Oh, I know what this one is. This is a... Oh, it was named after the maker Ford. Uh, not Ford. <laughs> well, by now it's already showing on the screen. <laughs> Anyways, I recognize that big, that big front end there, that bullet front end, but... That is a nice looking car. Not crazy about the rims on that, but I'm sure that those were what they came with. That one will have to have some research done on it. Post research. Is this our last car? I think this is our last car. You know, we're going to have to do another, another one besides this one. This is a Whiz Wheels Corgi Jr.'s Porsche 917. We're going to do one more. I don't know that that one really fits our diorama very well, but it is a Corgi. Not one of the uh, more sought after Corgis. That's their cheap version cars. Those wheels aren't going to blow anybody away too much. By the way, you know what? We'll finish with this one. I got a little story I can tell you about the Whiz Wheels. Uh, they don't get much love. <laughs> they were they were actually made in the early 70s to compete with Hot Wheels. Uh, they had low friction tires uh, on them. So they were meant to compete with Hot Wheels. And I don't believe this one is that old. I'm pretty sure it's not. I don't know much about Whiz Wheels. I am going to say this particular one is not one of the older ones. Because it is in too good a shape. And a little too rattly. To be that old you know what now we have nothing to look at so uh, let's let's do one more I lied I don't like to finish there with the screen open how about this guy he is a good muscle car that silver should show off pretty well that one Motor City Muscle Series it is a Chevelle from 2004 I don't know the year on this was this a uh, 70 70 Chevelle. This one pretty light. It does have a metal body, plastic base, but pretty light. These Chevelles can be some of the heavier Hot Wheels. If they have a metal base, these are heavy cars. All right, now as I said that, I took the car away. Oh, we want to focus on that. Okay, so that is going to do it for this round. Hope you like these, this new series, Talking Over the Diorama Cars. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.